Where do you have you lived here? Do you know somebody here? I've spent a lot of time in that area. I have friends there, veteran friends, and uh, one of our sons lives south uh, south of uh, Tampa on the water. So we know Florida pretty well. And and but the part I love the best is around where you are. It's it's kind of still has a rural connection. And right, it's right. Just lovely. Yeah. Do you know, we, we speak to attorneys who are also novelists and doctors who are also novelists, and quite often they draw from their profession their other profession. Uh, In in your case, as a journalist, you must see almost a little bit of everything. Um, It's not all about the law. It's not all about biology, uh, whatever. I mean, and and crime is certainly got to be part of journalism. Yeah, I'm lucky in that regard, Larry, that I have seen a nice cross-section or an an unnice cross-section of life in many cases. But in the case of Snow, the new book, part of it is my own experience. Uh, When I was quite young, uh, I spent a lot of time in the Montana wilderness with horses and stuff like that. So the beginning of the book is pretty much my own personal experience. And I know the Colorado, uh, Montana, Utah, uh, Nevada area pretty well. And so it it does really to my background a little bit, though I'm I'm not fond of Las Vegas, which I think one can tell. Okay, <laughs> so that so that so what you just told us uh, explains the the setting. What about the the storyline? Do you have? I, I mean, did you know cocaine dealers and things like that? <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> Well, you you do run across you do run across uh, being a journalist you run across a broad variety of people you run across many sinners and, and a few saints and uh, <laughs> so so yes I have I had the misfortune to uh, have known a bunch of coke dealers and again I worked a lot in Central America and Latin America and the cocaine uh, uh, situation begins there and ends of course in the United States where most of well Mexico is where most of the damage which is done. But snow is meant not just to be about cocaine, but really about what I call, it's it, what all I really wanted to do with the book was to create uh, a thriller that people couldn't put down. I think right. that's my kind of bottom line. I wanted to create a thriller that, that, I love thrillers, and I wanted to create one that was so terrifying and amazing and exciting that people couldn't put it down. But the the whole situation that it's in uh, is is a good background. Everything from snow is both cocaine and, of course, the winter. Right. The right. Right. We, we were talking this morning about that. how people are getting ready to uh, travel. And, and, uh-huh. and the one thing uh, that kind of a piece of advice this morning was that if you're traveling, you have to be ready for the possibility that you're going to be delayed. And if you're in yep. a, if you're in the airport for a couple of hours, you might want to download a movie. And I said, well, what about a book? Isn't that easier? You don't have to have electronics. You don't have to have Wi-Fi. You just have yep. a book, right? So I would, I would yep. I, this is a good one. I mean, you take the book with you to the airport, and you say, okay, this is my opportunity. Actually, you'll look forward to having a delay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm that way about books. And I do get some complaints, though, about snow. People say that it keeps them up at night. (laughs) They can't put it down. I think I've mentioned that to you before, Robin. Yes, uh, you have. I I love your writing. I love reading your books. Oh, well, thank you very much. I love talking with you guys. And uh, But also in Snow, one of the other things that I tried to do is look at a bunch of different illusions that we live with. Uh, Hollywood, of course, is one of them. Uh, uh, Wall Street, which is a very unfair way of making some people rich and the rest of us not. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. Las Vegas, which uh, says, says it loves you, but it only loves you until it extracts the last penny it can uh, out of right. your pocket, that's and then it sends you on its way. So, in the NFL and TV sports, I'm sick of the NFL right now, and and yes. so all of that, all of that fits into snow. I, yes. I mean, my main main character is a linebacker, a former linebacker, and a, uh, a TV uh, sports icon. So, I, I try to, I try to bring my thrillers right into the present day moment. And, yes, yes. Uh, going, I mean, going back, I remember Assassins you came on to talk to us mm-hmm. about. Uh, yep. Killing Maine, I think, was uh, yes. was one of them. Uh, I, I really enjoy the different personalities of the characters. I mean, I like uh, Whitney and uh, Kenny, yep. and uh, they seem to be compatible, and sometimes they're not compatible. That's a good point, really, Robin. And I, what I did, as I said, I lived quite a while in Montana in my younger days, and so I, tr- I tried to draw real Montana people, and they tend to be laid back and friendly, and they'll take care of you if you need help, but uh, don't ever mess with them. 
exactly. So the book has only been out a month, and I'm looking at Amazon to get this information. Right now, you are number 18. Did you know that? Wow. Number 18, according to Amazon. Wow, I did not know that. That's My God, I feel... That's pretty good. I'm sorry, Larry. No, no. Yeah, that's exciting. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's selling really well. I mean, it's what happens is each book makes all the other books sell more. So uh, I've got two more coming out next year, and uh, it, it just, just keeps going. I'm doing what I love to do, which is to share my stories and my experiences with, with my readers. I have, and, a, I have a kind uh, of a personal question for you. When you, yes, were, when you were doing journalism and you were not yet writing books, and, and this might not apply to you, but, but if it does, I'm just curious. Did you, when you started writing books, did you say to yourself, why didn't I start sooner? Yep, I thought that many times. Yep, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah, I, it's very hard to write a first novel because there's so much uh, you don't know how to do it yet. It's it's like uh, the first time you take a, a, a truck engine apart, you know? <laughs> you, spend, you, you spend your time, you look at the manual, of course the picture in the manual does not look at all like the engine. And <laughs> <laughs> well, the, I guess the advantage of um, taking a truck motor apart is you know it's not working. How do you know when yep. a book isn't working, other than the readership not being there, I guess? Yeah, I think that's true, Larry. And also, you have a sense when, it, when, when, I, when I write something, my goal is to make it so real for the reader that she or he feels that they're there. And they're experiencing it. And I can tell when that's not working, when I have to work on it more to get it right, to make right. the transition so automatic that, that the reader doesn't even realize that she or he is reading. They think they're experiencing something. And the Kurt is very interesting because all he wants to do is uh, keep his property. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Boy, you've read the book well, Robin, I have to say. Uh, yeah, he's... he's He's half Cheyenne, he's a mountain man, and uh, his ranch is endangered by an energy company takeover, and he loves his wife, and he loves his horses, and he loves his cattle and his chickens, and he wants to get back there. And, uh, and raising raising chickens and cattle in Montana and horses is not an easy thing, because I, I can remember... I can remember the temperature going down to 30 below in November <laughs> right, right. And, and then reaching 40 below in January, and it wouldn't start really to get warm until April. So being a rancher in Montana is, is, is not an easy thing. I think it's easier to grow cattle down around Ocala than it is up in Montana. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> we do have uh, a cattle drive every year, uh, Mike, Mike Bond is, uh, is a superstar in the literary world. Uh, I do have a copy of the book, Snow. If you want the copy that was sent to me, you are welcome to it. I'll just pick one person at random, and you are the lucky one. The rest of us have to go buy it. It's very affordable. I found it on Amazon, and um, let's see. I think it's available in a couple of formats. It's even an audio book already. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. How quickly do they do these things? They do them right away? Well, it depends on how big they think the book's going to sell. If they think the book's going to sell big, they go, they jump into the audio book right ah, away. In okay. Fact, I didn't know. The audio book, with the audio book was actually done before the book came out. Uh, wow. Wow. Oh, Mike, they, well, that yeah. just shows your reputation. Um, Mike, thank you for being on the air with us. Do you have a website of your own? Yeah, it's Mike Bond Books. Dot com and uh, that's a easy to find just www.mikebondbooks.com or my Amazon author page which just go to Amazon and type in Mike Bond and you will have more information than you could possibly even need and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway I, go ahead please sorry, I'm well sorry. I'm just going to say thank you for being on the air have a great holiday and uh, definitely come back with the next book if you're ever in Ocala we'd love to have you in the studio I would love to do that. I'll keep you posted on that, and I want to thank you for the for the visit back. It's wonderful to talk to you both, and my best to everybody in the Ocala area, and, and thanks again to you both. Thank you, and we'll share this uh, video that we just did, well, the podcast, whatever, on YouTube and Facebook. Mike Bond, the book again is called Snow. Thank you, Mike. Thank you both very much. Take care. We'll be right back. This is Brad. 
I want to take a moment to talk about a serious issue. In the next five years, the aviation industry is projected to have a shortage of commercial pilots. Now is the time to start training. Ocala Flying Club has started a scholarship for the youth of Marion County ages 17 to 24. The club will donate up to $4,000 towards a pilot's license. This will help get the student on their way to obtain their commercial pilot license. If this sounds like something you would be interested in, or if you know someone that would be, please contact Ocala Aviation Services, 861-7484. We all know the name Verizon, but we may not know all the services provided. Be sure and listen Wednesday the 8th at 9.50 a.m. when Martin Burville, Senior Vice President and Group President of Verizon Business Markets, will be our guest. Martin will be 